friends, welcome. I thought today I would do my best to bring you the requested tutorial on how I go about setting up my guitars, uh, especially those with Floyd Rose fitted, but the fundamentals are the same, uh, whether you've got a tunematic style or not. Um, I'll do my best to keep it as confusion free as possible, but uh, I can't make any promises. Okay, well first things first, what I like to do is, is uh, have a good look at the neck down the fretboard, ensuring I've got no twists and corrugations. But um, what I, what I or as well as high frets of course, but what I do is I look into the light down the, down the uh, neck of the guitar and I use the shadow of each string and I look at that on the top of each fret as I look down. Just that it's, it's, yeah, anyway, you can, you can look down and you can really tell a lot about the guitar by doing this. Uh, and, and high and low frets really stand out. Uh, it's, it's the best thing to do straight away when you pick an instrument up. Um, you can tell a lot about the guitar. But um, later on, I'll, I'll come back and run through uh, dressing that fret if there happens to be a high one. Uh, because it's important you get that out. You don't really need a pony one if you've got any sort of hand skills at all. I'd definitely do it myself. Um, but anyway, we'll just move on from that so that no one gets bored and turns me off. Second thing I do, I choose the strings that I want on the guitar as well as keep in mind the pitch that I'm after for setting the guitar up in. You can't really, I can't just have one guitar set up and then change the pitch to C and then bring it back to E standard and so forth. It just doesn't work. Um, you re I, I really set up my guitar and tune it for each half a step or a step that I, I've changed. Excuse me. Um, but general rule of thumb with string choice and tension. Uh, if, it's, if it's A standard on a guitar like this, I'll probably put do I say E standard tuning? Uh, 10 to 46 gauge on it. Uh, on that's that's for so you got a, a lighter style Floyd Rose. You don't want two heavy strings with a Floyd Rose in it. I've found it doesn't work as well. But on a, on a guitar with a with a tunematic bridge, I'll, like I've got 10 to 52s on that. That's tuned to uh, uh, E flat, I think. Nice Slayer riffs. Uh, the Dave Mustaine, that's got 10 to 52s on it, and the Randy Rhodes, also 10 to 52s. I like a beefier bass, like it's better for chugging and tight, tight riffs. But you've also got the uh, lighter strings for doing your lead work on. Um, the, the Rebel guitar, I leave in a, like a D standard tuning, and for that I have 11 to 50s on that guitar. Just slightly higher to compensate for the... For the lower tuning. What I do then is I tune them into pitch with, uh, with what I'm doing. So on a Floyd Rose unit, if I'm going to tune these into pitch, I've got to ensure that it doesn't move. As I'm, as I'm tuning the, the guitar and winding them all tighter and tighter, your Floyd Rose lifts up. I'm sure you've all had it happen before. It just keeps moving up and you end up pulling your hair out. All you do to stop that is you make up something like this, even a battery can work, you go to the back of the guitar and this, you've either got a gap at the back here or you can take out a spring, oh, there's a few different ways, I'll try and run it through, I use a bunch of paddle pop sticks glued together with super glue and just wrap it in masking tape to, for the last little bit of the shin, but I, I drop that into the back of the guitar there, I press it in and what that does is stops the Floyd Rose from being pulled down when I add more tension on the strings. It, it, I've set it up so, I hope you can see this, but the uh, Floyd Rose bass is perfectly parallel with the guitar body. Uh, so whatever tuning I do, it's holding it exactly where it wants to be set up for later down the track. So. But as I say, if you don't have, you know, the luxury of paddle pop sticks or 
I, I used to even use a 9-volt battery in this guitar. It happened to fit pretty much perfectly as well. I have had a, a Fender Stratocaster in the past that didn't have a nice um, parallel gap at the back. See, this, the block of the, of the, the tremolo is, is straight, whereas the, I think the Strat ones had a slight curve to them and they, they didn't work. So in that scenario, what I used to do, I'd take out the middle spring and I made up, this is, this is just a dowel, I know I painted it grey because I actually left it in the Strat there for a while. Well, I've tried to show you on the camera what this little bit of dowel here, what I used to do with it was I'd put it into this region of the guitar. You can stretch out the Floyd Rose and pop it in there like, like that. It's not going to stay in this, uh, well, it'll stay there. See, that too holds the, a set distance of the Floyd Rose unit. And then I'll just wind these, these two screws in and out to ensure that the, the tremolo is level. But in this case, this block isn't made for this guitar, so it doesn't fit at all. But I'm just giving you an, an example of other ways to go about shimming out the, the Floyd Rose. Okay, so in this case, that's in. The Floyd Rose is perfectly level with the, uh, with the fretboard there, or with the guitar body. And we can go about undoing our little screws here and tuning the guitar to the pitch that we desire. Right, next. What I look for in the neck now is uh, to see that it's got the right amount of relief or tension. Uh, to do that, um, there's fancy, fancy ways of, of getting around with straight edges and so forth, but all I do, I hold my finger on the first fret, I put my thumb on the 22nd fret, and I tap the 12th fret with my finger. Um, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's actually a little bit of clearance from the string. Um, that clearance, you don't really measure it, but to give you an idea what I've got on my guitar set up, um, I'll try and use one of these feeler gauges to give you a... It would have to be... Uh, I would say it's 20 thou on the feeler gauge, like the 12th fret, when I do that. But a set neck guitar also, um, you, you can't really account for the last, for, for this region of the guitar because it's all glued into the body and isn't going to have any relief or curve. So you can uh, do the same thing but touch your finger on the 14th fret, again on the 1st, then I tap the 6th with my finger. Uh, and still there's clearance under the 6th. There's not 20 thou. There's probably half that 10 thou gap. Um, and that's what I do to check the, the relief of the neck. If, if there's no... If you do this and there's no gap under the string, well, I think you've got to make a truss rod adjustment. Um, some people are scared of doing this. Don't be. Just don't make anything too drastic. Uh, don't sit there and keep winding a couple of turns out of it. All I do, if I want a little bit more or a little bit more tension than that, if I'm if I think twenty thousand is a bit too much, um, lefty loosey, righty tidy, I drop the uh, drop the uh, Allen key into the truss rod at the top there after I've taken the cover off. Some guitars have a little like a three eight nut on the top of the truss rod. This is an Allen key one. And I'll, I'll just give that a turn. Um, I won't turn it much. I'll probably turn it that much at a time. Once I've turned it that much, I'll go back to the guitar. I'll do the check again. If you find, if you find that the truss rod is really tight to move on the guitar, don't force it. Um, you can snap things. Um, I've, I've seen it done. I've not snapped one myself, but... I found that Dominion had a really tight truss rod and it's got the nut style at the top. Uh, I thought it was tight because it has carbon rods. Anyway, fuck it. Um, I fixed it. Alright, once you've, once you've attained that you've got a nice 
uh, tension on the fretboard or relief, and you're happy with your 20 or 10 power gap, you've got to have some sort of gap under there. Uh, the next thing to work out is the height of the tremolo um, or the or the bridge. You know, just just get your your, your height correct. You've got to get a nice relationship between uh, not doing something like this, where you wind the string, you wind the the bridge down to the point where you think you've got a nice low action, but really you've you've done exactly this, and you're going to have too much of a a clearance under this region of the fretboard and as you get down to bend some notes you're going to find your your actions really low um, and that's no good you've really got to get something like this going on where it's a nice even curve and toward the end of the guitar the string is either parallel with the fretboard or slightly further away um, I know with this guitar the way I've set it up is the, the highest gap, the, the, the biggest gap between the string and the fretboard is on the 22nd fret. That's just the way I like to have it. Every adjustment I make on these, it might be overkill, I don't know, but I don't like wearing all the, the knife edge out of these. You've got to make them last. I take the springs out of the back of the guitar fully. I take all the tension off the strings and then I can adjust it, you know, there's, I can make my small adjustment, bring the guitar back into pitch, you can just drop, drop the block back in if you want, um, and that's, that's what I do, uh, to, to make any adjustments up and down these, the, the, these sorts of units are much easier, you can just grab the little knurled knobs and give them a slight tweak, but the Floyd Rose, yeah, it's, they're, they're very soft and you'll, you can damage it. As well as the, the screws that sit in the threads, um, you don't, there's a lot of tension pulling on those screws. And if you turn those, you can really um, slowly just wear out the screw and it'll end up being sloppy inside. Just if you're wondering, the, the gap that I have between, at the 22nd fret, from the top of the fret to the bottom of the string, I'll give it to you in, uh, in millimetres. But on the E string, I'm right on 2 millimetres, or just a little bit above 2 millimetres. And on the uh, E string, I'm about, about 3.5 mil off the fretboard from the top of the fret. That's just to give you an idea.